everybody, how's things going? So now that we've reached the end of Mr. Pertwee, um, I thought, and I kind of promised that I would do one of these videos um, of my favourite Pertwee stories. Now, when I did this for William Hartnell and when I did this for Patrick Troughton, I picked five episodes. Um, this one's going to be a little bit different. This one's a little bit longer. Um, there are more than five on this list. Um, mainly just because I think I enjoyed so many I couldn't really discount any of them as being kind of not a favourite if that makes any sense um, there was just so much kind of good writing good direction good acting just amazing content through this entire kind of run so I couldn't really there was just some stories that were just impossible to leave out really and I had to put them in there so I'm probably just going to go and get started on this one. Um, I do have like a book of notes filled, so um, I apologise if I keep kind of looking down. I'm just kind of trying to remember where I'm at and kind of what I've spoke about, really. Um, so I'm just going to get started with this one. So in last place on my list is Death to the Daleks. Now, the reason why Death to the Daleks made it onto this list um, is for one sole reason for me and that was Bilal. Um, Bilal for me made this story so so much. His relationship with Sarah I thought was beautiful. Um, the gentleman who portrayed Bilal um, was just absolutely fantastic. His physicalities, his body movements, his body did more acting than anything in this in this episode. It was absolutely fantastic. Um, it's a story I've seen before, um, but it doesn't take away from the charm and the happiness that Bilal brings when I watch this. Um, but his relationship with Sarah for me was, was the biggest highlight. Um, I love the city, the excellent city. I just think it's brilliant with all the, the little tasks. It's, it's uh, quite Indiana Jones to an extent. Um, all the different kind of trials and tribulations you've got to go through. It's like us getting to the centre of Exelon was us trying to find the Holy Grail in in a way um, and it was just amazing I thought it was brilliant that city I always love seeing the Daleks and the Daleks um, without power is a really interesting concept how do they survive you know they have to make alliances there's no other two ways about it it's the only way they could kind of get out of this situation really um, just to kind of not only see the Doctor and and Sarah and Bilal overcoming the obstacles to kind of escape the city. The Daleks had their own obstacles in being powerless and trying to get the Trisilicate. And you had Galloway, who was kind of the guy who you didn't trust him, but then all of a sudden you kind of did trust him again, and then you didn't, and then at the end he sacrificed himself. So it was just such a brilliant story for me. Um, and that's the reason why it made it onto this list. Um, now, next on my list um, is Day of the Daleks. So my last two on the list, both Dalek stories. Now, the reason why this made it on the list was because I loved the concept of the coming from the future to the past to change the future. Now, obviously, the Doctor always says it's something you can't do. Or you can create paradoxes. Things can go extremely wrong. Um, but it was really intriguing and it was great meeting the Ogrons as well because I didn't have a clue what an Ogron was until I watched this. It's not a, an adversary that I'd ever heard or seen before. Um, but kind of them doing the Daleks work was quite intriguing to me. I found that a really good concept, like the Daleks having these minions to an extent working for them. Not the brightest of creatures, animals, um, that you'd ever meet but for the Daleks they served a purpose and I really enjoyed that um, I found it interesting the fact that they were targeting um, a political meeting and it was a certain politician that they they kind of wanted to destroy um, and then in the end the guys from the future ended up realizing actually no it's uh, we need to sacrifice one of our own pretty much to kind of do what needs to be done and it was meant to always happen this way so they kind of just had to do what what kind of was already done I suppose for them so I found that really interesting um 
the fact that the Daleks are always wanting to kind of take over Earth as well is just, it's kind of a repetitive concept, but it was it was so much of a, a backbone a story because you only really saw it when we went to kind of to the to the times where the Daleks were kind of in charge um, at that point. But when obviously we were in the politician era um, in the past, it was it was kind of the backburner, but it was always there, which I found really clever. Um, so that's why this story kind of made it onto my list. Really, next on the list. Um, was Frontier and Space. Now Frontier and Space for me, I really enjoyed the Draconians actually. Again, not a monster I'd ever met before. Um, not a monster or an alien, I should say, um, that I'd even heard of before watching this episode. Um, but their makeup, makeup was fantastic in this. It was brilliant. It was something that I really, really enjoyed watching and viewing and even the close-ups were just fantastic because it was so well done. The prosthetics and everything were, were just fantastic in this one. The tension of who was working for who in this one was really intriguing for me as well because you did not know whose side people were on. You had the woman woman that was in charge of Earth, then you had the Draconian King, the Prince, kind of working together. Um, and then they kind of weren't working together and then you had this general that was blowing up ships because he thought there were enemies but it turns out there weren't enemies and it was just literally it was like chinese whispers everyone was on high alert um you didn't know who or what to believe you didn't know whose stories were true um past roxy i suppose quite reminiscent to the cold war i suppose um it was just a little bit all over the place and you didn't really know what to think um and the fact that obviously the Daleks were involved, um, but not only were the Daleks involved, the Master was involved. So it was nice to kind of see that happen. And, it's, you know, it's always nice to see Roger Delgado in an episode. Um, and I really enjoyed watching this one. I thought it was a really good story and I liked how it, how it would follow on. Um, and then the next on the list is actually Planet of the Daleks. And I liked how it kind of just followed straight on into that one. And the reason why I did like that um, I really like the Spyrodons um, and Joe's relationship with the Spyrodon that kind of sacrificed himself so that the Daleks couldn't leave that room. Um, I think he was called Westler. Um, was just very, very sweet. And for me, it was quite reminiscent of Sarah's relationship with Belal. Um, it was just a brilliant little story and it was great. Again, that it, as I said, it just flowed straight on from the previous one. The awakening of the Dalek army I thought was brilliant as well to see all those little models just sat there waiting to wake up. I loved that they had to try and escape that refrigeration unit with the kind of their own basically homemade hot air balloon um, to kind of get out to make sure that they survived. Um, seeing the Daleks get killed with all the ice was brilliant as well um, after they'd been in stasis and, and woke up and then the next thing you know, there they go, they're, they're kind of gone again because pff, ice is there, you're buggered. So I really enjoyed that as well. Now, next on the list, um, which I believe this is my eighth favourite <laughs> story, um, is The Mind of Evil. Um, I loved this story. The Keller Machine was brilliant and such a great little invention and the whole thing about it was the master that had created it under this kind of guise of being somebody else and using it on prisoners and the after effects of what happened to the prisoners how it started doing its own thing and it was transporting itself all around and it was taking people out at the same time it was just like you didn't know where it was going to end up and the tension of it was brilliant so i really enjoyed watching that one um the whole reformation of the prisoners as i say i really enjoyed that as well and i thought it was it was great but obviously most of the time they just kind of they died because all of the the evil was taken from their brain and into the color machine so the color machine was kind of collectively storing all of the evil thought processes from people's brains and when you see what it is that you're most afraid of as well um i love that when the doctor was watching it um you know he saw 
fire and flames and at first I didn't kind of realise why that was something that would scare him so much and then I think some of you guys had said that um, obviously it was like flashbacks to Inferno and I thought oh my god that's like brilliant how they kind of linked it back to that and it was great and I loved seeing the fact that when the master kind of was under the influence of the Keller machine it was a giant laughing doctor that I saw so it was always nice to get a little introspective into his psyche because we don't usually get that really he always has a kind of a, a, a you know like a, a false face on you never know what he's doing there's always an act with the master everything's kind of suppressed and it was nice to see a, a little bit of insight into him as a as a person actually and to see what his main main fears were um, so this is the reason why it made it onto the list now the seventh um favorite pertwee story for me was in version of the dinosaurs i just love this story um i know a lot of people laugh at the puppets but i just love the the charm of this one it's great that you know we see this desolate london when we first arrive and we don't really know what's what's going on um Ewe streets are always a great little opener for me i love the suspense of that um so it was lovely to see um sarah getting attacked by a pterodactyl <laughs> it's just brilliant not something you'd seen i love that we get the the little caveman that kind of slips through um and he doesn't really know what's going on and then he kind of gets end up getting sucked back um peter miles who has popped up a couple of times prior to this um obviously pops up again in genesis of the daleks um it was just fantastic in this role of this scientist but he always always plays someone that always has an agenda but he does it so well he's incredibly talented at, at doing that i i think personally um he's brilliant at being a, a more sinister character and obviously him wanting to have this world where everything was kind of back to being as as i suppose as pure as it could be and we hadn't destroyed the planet him having that thought process and having kind of the, the brains to make a machine to be able to possibly do that and then duping people into thinking they're actually on a spaceship going to this new planet such a brilliant little story the twist of that cliffhanger where sarah wakes up and she thinks she's on a spaceship it's one of my favorite cliffhangers of this entire kind of season I think it's a brittle cliffhanger and you've got Ruth who kind of is in, one of the people in, in charge, um, one of the elders of the spaceship and just doesn't believe Sarah at all and kind of shuts her down everywhere. You Every time she tries to say, look, I can just walk out of there and I won't die and she just doesn't believe her. There's just so many great performances in this and I just enjoy it as a story overall and then obviously you've got the betrayal of Mike in this one. Mike was someone I never really always liked anyway um, and this story I remember when I first watched it, it kind of solidified that for me because it irritated me quite a lot um, when I first met him and then in this one it was kind of more like ah oh, yeah this is this is this is Mike um, and I always felt really bad as well because obviously the brig must have been shattered by that because obviously he'd worked so long with this dude he kind of probably thought he knew him um inside out really only for him to kind of be a part of this scheme um probably hurt him quite a lot actually and then i believe he's kind of then just pretty much relieved of his duties after that because when we see him in planet of the spiders he's 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 at this retreat being all zen so yeah that's the reason why i just love watching that one and i love the little puppets and things as well i just find it quite sweet so the next one on my list is the time warrior sorry the time monster not the time warrior the next one is the time monster um i loved this story actually anything that's related to the past mythology i'm in i'm there 100 percent straight away um, I like the addition of Kronos in this. I thought the addition of Kronos was very clever. Um, I love that, that we got to go to Atlantis with the master. Um, the queen was... Um, she had a really lovely cat. <laughs> she also wore very revealing clothing um, as well. But everyone was brilliantly cast in this one. And it was a very interesting story to watch. I really enjoyed the whole experiment with the crystal. 
the fact that Stuart um, was aged and then you were thinking, oh shit, is he going to be able to go back to how he, he was? Like, you know, is he going to be a young man again? You just didn't know what was going to happen. And then obviously we did manage to get him back to normal. Um, and I always enjoy it when the doctor tends to be in a dilemma when it comes to the master. Because you had ample opportunity to just leave him with Kronos in the in that world where Kronos existed in that dimension. He could have easily just left him there. But the doctor being the doctor just kind of was like, no, he's I'm gonna I'm gonna give him another chance. Please like kind of please give him another chance only for him to kind of shoot off and then do what he always does and run away again. Um I found that really interesting, the fact that even after everything that he'd done and he brought Kronos forth, um, so many people had died and he still tried to save him as best as he could. Um, it says a lot about the Doctor for me, um, as the type of person that he is. Um, next on my list um, was the Three Doctors. Um, I loved watching this so, so much. There was just something magical about this. Seeing William and Pat and John all together was just wonderful. And really, I was really sad that obviously we didn't get William in a more in-depth capacity. But obviously, he was he was very ill at this point, so it wasn't something that he was able to physically achieve or do, which is a shame. But even just to have him in the kind of overseer role was brilliant in this just kind of helping them out being the wise doctor that he was um was was lovely i loved omega and the whole anti-matter thing um i really liked the man who was the scientist who was collecting the films um i liked him a lot he was really funny the little bauble things were really bizarre as well the little orange baubles that everyone was kind of running away from and the brig getting to go into the TARDIS was brilliant and Benton again, as he always does, just takes things in his stride because he's a boss. I loved as well. It was very touching to watch actually um, the moment when the Doctor sent Joe back through and the, then the brig went through and he saluted, which I thought was amazing because as much as the Doctor hated it when the brig would salute him, I thought that was quite sweet. Um, so I really enjoyed watching that um, that episode, and the story was well written as well. It was for me, it was a well written story, and it was very clever in terms of bringing everybody back together. And the fact that we used the recorder to pretty much save everybody, um, I thought was great. The fact that Omega had been in this black hole for so long that he wasn't even there anymore, just his his sheer will, meant he mentally still existed. Uh, that was really clever i loved that so this is the reason why it made it onto the list um fourth favorite because this is number four um was planet of the spiders now planet of the spiders for me i love that we get to properly go to metabolus 3 this time and we get to see um how these spiders have evolved and you've got the great one and then you've got the queen you've got lupton who was like this crazy dude who's gone to this retreat to kind of calm down the retreat where mike is do a bit of kind of chanting and calming himself and he ends up doing what he does. Um, I love the concept of the fact that obviously the the crystal made it so that Tommy ended up being, you know, a clever, clever guy and it actually helped Tommy's mental state um, and it, it actually, you know, made him more intelligent. I loved that because I love Tommy in this. Tommy is kind of... The, the innocent in all of this really is the, the uh, antithesis of innocence for me. Um, that's probably the wrong word to use actually. Antithesis, it's probably not right. I know what I mean. Um, but I just love this. Um, considering Mike's in this, the fact that um, obviously we only kind of get little bits of unit in this and you never see the brig going because obviously the brig's probably thought to himself, I'm not, he's not kind of my responsibility anymore, I don't know. But it's nice to see the Sarah in the capacity of doing a job as well. Because um, you don't get many stories where Sarah's kind of off doing um, journalism work, um, really. Other than, obviously, we've seen it in the Time Warrior. Um, she was getting pictures invasion of the dinosaurs because she wanted to sell them. 
and that was kind of part of her job and then we had this one and then obviously in robot she goes off and does bits and bobs as well but um it's nice when we see that because it kind of gives you that link to the fact that you know she's still got ties to earth and she she's obviously she's got a job and you know she does all of this stuff on top of traveling and it's always great to see you hard at work really and i love campo and the whole regeneration thing now one thing i'd never caught before when watching this because i'd never seen the episode where the doctor tells joe about the hermit that used to live under the tree i never really got the reference with campo um in this at all um until i'd seen that one with the doctor and joe and then when obviously when i was re-watching this one it kind of clicked and i thought oh my god that's what willing come back to and because i i didn't have that connection when i was little when i used to watch it um i used to watch uh, planet the spiders i never understood you know well he knows him but how does he know him we've never been shown how we know him but now i know how he knows him and it i just thought it was really clever to kind of bring that back in i don't know if that was kind of something that was always planned um but i just found it brilliant really now third on my list um is spearhead from space mainly because the autons made me shit myself <laughs> watching this they were so much creepier than the ones in rose um i'm not a fan of that episode anyway rose um i don't particularly like that episode um for me it was a bit of a, biz a bizarre opener i suppose i mean obviously it was it was there to introduce characters and to kind of reintroduce the doctor to me they could have used a, a different villain to kind of kick off the new seasons other than the autons and probably brought the autons back uh, uh, later on um but i did as i say find these creepier when the guys were in the street and obviously that one that was sat in the chair and the window display and its hand was moving and it turned around i think it was it was very michael myers in the mask aspect actually and i think that's probably what kind of did it for me really because that was that was fairly creepy um but i really enjoyed this when we, you know, obviously with a nesting conscious and it was that took over this factory that were making dolls and then you know they were making these mannequins and the mannequins were going in shop displays the one thing i didn't like about this was when the dog barney died i hated that that was that was like one of the worst parts of this entire story for me was the the dog that died um there's always a dog it's always a dog that gets sacrificed and things like this it bloody happened in the demons and in the churchyard i think a dog died in the churchyard so it's kind of something that happens quite a lot in in programs and films and things it always tends to be the dog that dies um but overall it, i just thought it was a great story it was a brilliant story to introduce john into as well um i loved the whole hospital aspect of things where they couldn't understand why he had two hearts and they thought it was an error with the x-ray machine and it was just very very clever and the brig obviously meeting the doctor again with his new face was always an interesting thing to see so that's why it made it onto my list um, my second favorite story from the pet we years was the demons i loved this um the fact that we had the it was like a documentary news style to at the start i thought was brilliant um i really enjoyed that i really enjoyed the fact that like we were spectators along with the guys at unit that were watching all of this on television watching all go down with the doctor and joe benton everyone was just sat waiting for it to happen and i loved that because it kind of made you feel like you were you were watching it with them as it unfolded like you were in the same kind of situation neither of neither you as the viewer if you hadn't seen it before knew what was going to happen along with those guys so i thought that was very very clever it was always nice to see the master in this one uh, he always pops up in different disguises like this one obviously he was playing like i think it was a vicar or a priest um obviously in charge of everything he was summoning the the demon through um he was morris danson <laughs> there was things happening in this one that um i really enjoyed watching really as i say we, we lost another dog in the churchyard at the beginning of this one um very eerie way again to open an episode anything that's kind of church related as always tends to be quite creepy when it comes to tv shows um but i really really enjoyed it other than the kind of the demon when he was a giant looking like mr tumnus um and the gargoyle was a little bit silly at times as well it just added to the charm of it though and that's kind of the reason why it made it onto my list 
Now, number one on my list, I actually think there's 12 in total that I've gone through. Um, number one was Inferno. Now, Inferno was just something I had never expected to see. It was a massive surprise, but one of the best surprises watching this show from season one I have had. This was fantastic. Um, without a doubt, for me, it might actually be... I'm currently watching season 14, but this story might for me be possibly my favourite one ever that I've watched now. Even with my rewatches, I think this might be my favourite story that I've seen. This was just outstanding writing. It's for me it's up there with the war games in terms of the epicness of it. Um it actually pushed the war games off my top spot for my favourite story so far. Um the whole penetration of the Earth's crust, that whole project that was going on, um that was causing you know, the volcanic eruptions, it was triggering everything. The green goo that possessed everybody was insane. Um, I loved um, the alternate world. I thought that was fantastic when we got to meet alternate Brig and alternate Liz. Um, obviously a little bit different. Um, but he kind of even won them around after a while because they really, well, other than the Brig, because the Brig was a little bit of a shit in the alternate world. I also found him bizarre without his moustache and his eye patch. Um, but it was a really interesting story concept, this one, and I enjoyed it so much. That cliffhanger of the lava approaching, and then you never saw, obviously, they, you knew they'd obviously perished, but the fact that you just didn't see it, I think, added more to that scene as a whole. Um, I think seeing it would have degraded it slightly and it wouldn't have been as, as impacting on you as a watcher watching it um, if you'd seen it happen. So I thought that was a very clever thing for them to do. Um, but overall for me, this was this was undoubtedly my favourite part we story. The actor was unbelievable throughout the entire run of this episode. The, every, every single part, I don't think there was a part where I was just like, oh, my God. You know part four i loved this i absolutely loved it um so for me that's why it, it made the top of this list um it was just the sheer brilliance of it the writing everything i just found astounding um it was it was just something special for me uh, so that that that's my <laughs> top Pertwee episodes as I said I think um, there was 12 in total on the list um, so more than the usual 5 that I do um, you know pop down your favourite one in the comments um, obviously everyone's going to have different ones um, different reasons for why they're their favourites but I'd really kind of like to know what you guys think because I know some of you have kind of popped down it, when the parts have been put up you know this, this is like my favourite one of this this is why I love this one but you know, just fire them down there, um, and like have a, we can have like a little chat about it and stuff. It's great and see you know why we love them so much. Um, I'm probably kind of going to sign off um, because this is running for nearly half an hour, um, and I shall see you guys soon. So thank you, thanks. <laughs>